Hello everyone! I'm excited to show you my first game from the 2022 World Tournament for War of the Ring. And my opponent is Backdrifts. We are going to play two games in round one. And they had a preference for Shadow, game one. So they're playing Shadow and I'm playing Free People. And we decided that we would use two action tokens for Free People. And obviously we both will get them every time we play free people. So this game, I'm free people with two action tokens. They will get two action tokens when we play our second game. So they allocated zero eyes and rolled one. And you can see that they got quite a few musters here. And that's obviously a strong start for Shadow. I don't love only a single movement against one die. And I always like to try and move twice on turn one so that next turn on turn two, I can move my third movement only against sixes and try and get past Moria safely. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this turn, but clearly the right thing to do is draw cards from Celeborn's Galadrium. This is a great card. I'm super happy to see this in my opening hand. There is another way is a super powerful card, but I tend to prefer to see it late game because obviously Gollum isn't guide yet. And uh, Heroic Death is a powerful combat effect, but typically I would prefer to play it for the card effect just because the card effect is so good and it can really help you destroy the ring once you're in Mordor. All right, so I start off by passing, and my opponent gets Isengard to war, and then they get Sauron to war, and now I play Killeborn's Galadrium. Very happy to see that. I draw through a day and a night, not playable, because I don't have any companions on the board, and Aomer. So Aomer is a wonderful card, very happy to see it, and at least that gives me something playable to do with my muster dice if I want to, and it just helps me defend Rohan, which is often a little tricky to defend early. Okay, my opponent now goes ahead and gets Saruman. That makes a lot of sense. And then I move the Fellowship, because why not? And I'm safe. And then my opponent organizes some armies in Mordor. And so, okay, I don't really know where they're going yet. It feels like they could easily go to the north, but they could also come straight towards Gondor, because they got enough muster, so... Uh, Sauron is at war. They could just take out all of Gondor. I'm not sure where they're going to go yet. So I don't really know what to do with my muster dice here. I could play Aomer. I could, I mean, I could get the elves to war right here. And then if this army in Dol Guldur marches north to Woodland Realm, then I could potentially get the elves to war if I also use my action token and at the start of next round I could get an elite into woodland realm before the Dol Guldur army comes in I don't know leave in the comments what would you do with these two musters and also would you use any action tokens now right away obviously it's nice to save them but it could be good uh in the end I decided that I was going to move the fellowship a second time with a ring you know I don't love giving shadow rings so early but I like only moving against one eye, and I particularly like getting two movement down turn one. So I move with this die before deciding what to do with this muster die in case I get revealed, like a two reveal or something like that, then Gandalf can die, and then I can use Strider's ability to hide with this muster. So that's why I'm moving on this action. Okay, so... Uh, my opponent hits me on a five, and obviously I don't want to be hit here, but at least they don't reveal me. So, you know, I don't love that, but it could have certainly could have been worse. And now the question is, do I lose Gandalf? And on one hand, losing Gandalf only to a one is kind of sad. Um, but on the other hand, Saruman is in play. So if I roll a Will of the West, I could get a turn to Gandalf. And that's obviously pretty tempting. So... I decide, I decide to lose Gandalf here. And, you know, maybe there's an argument to be made for holding off and waiting until I get, um, I get a better tile to kill him off. But I feel like, um, given the speed of things, I like the chances of getting a turn, turn two Gandalf. I have a, I think a, a little around a 50% chance of getting Gandalf next round. I, I, I don't remember what five to the six, five sixths to the fourth is minus one. Anyway, uh, okay, so they move now. 
um, five units into minus Morgul. And um, that makes me think they're coming to Gondor. So since I didn't get revealed, and they have quite a few armies here that could come right up and attack Gondor, um, I decide to muster Gondor once. That does make it a little easier for Shadow to put Gondor to war next round and get the Witch King. So for instance, if Shadow happens to roll only two attacks, they could... Um, actually, they, they have another die anyway, so they can get this army to North Athelion. Yeah, so I guess my thinking was, as long as they roll at least two attacks, they can get the Witch King next round, and that's very likely on seven dice, or eight dice, uh, seven dice, because I move they have to allocate one eye. Still, they're probably going to get two attacks, which can put Gondor to war, and therefore, I might as well try and get an elite into Minas Tirith. So that's, that's my thinking. Um... I don't know if this is right. I could have played Aomer, but I feel like that gives me an option to, um, if I roll, happen to roll a bunch of Palantirs, then I could use that instead. So that's my thinking. Okay, and then go ahead and move the army out. They leave one behind in Minas Morgul in case I have some scouts action from Asgiliath to North Athelion. I won't be able to move directly into Minas Morgul. I, th I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so, you know, I wouldn't call that the best start for me but it's not horrible the fellowship is still hidden i got two movement i've killed off gandalf if i can roll the will of the west now um that that could be really great so they allocate one eye uh they roll one more and i managed to get a will of the west so i said don't be late gandalf and uh so gandalf is not late obviously it would be better to also roll a character die so that i could uh move the fellowship once but i'm happy enough with getting Gandalf. So that's, that's fair. And if you notice, I did happen to roll a couple of Palantirs. So now I think to myself, well, at least I have something useful to do with Aomer. Um, Swords and Ariador, not a great card. Eagles are coming. Great combat effect. I very rarely play the card effect. Um, Swords and Ariador, I'm probably going to cycle. So at the beginning of the round, I like to think, okay, how am I going to spend my dice? Clearly, I'm going to use a Will of the West to get Gandalf. This, um, Muster will probably be used to muster in Minas Tirith. Obviously, I would like to use Army Muster to get maybe a regular from Carrick to Old Forest Road and these units from Edoras into Westmnet, but um, it's going to be higher priority to get an extra elite into Minas Tirith just to make that as strong as I can. Since I bothered to muster Gondor last round, might as well take advantage of it. So I don't know. I basically have this muster is in Minas Tirith, this Will of the West is Gandalf. And then who knows what I'm going to do with these two Palantirs, probably Aomer, and then who knows what. And so because of that, um, when I think about it, I decide, well, I'm probably going to play Aomer, but then that leaves me with these four other cards, which are not particularly useful. And therefore, I might as well play Swords and Ariador first to see what card I draw into. So maybe I would prefer to play that. And I draw Imrahil of Dolamroth, which is nice because Gondor is being attacked. So that's fine. Um, and also, you know, maybe I could have gotten scouts here or something like that, but that's fine. All right. So Asgiliath gets attacked and there's one hit on each side. And I retreat to Pelargir because I know that I'm getting an elite into Minas Tirith, filling up that stronghold. Often I might consider moving that regular somewhere else just to cause trouble to Shadow. Um, but because it seems like they're going to mount an attack taking over all of Gondor, I'd rather just try and muster in Gondor, make it as hard as possible to take over. Okay, so they get the Witch King, or they think about it, they decide to draw a card. Oh, I didn't see that. So they drew, um, they drew Denethor's Folly right here. That's a really cool draw. Um, so they had Shadows on Misty Mountain. I didn't see that. So even though there there is an elite in Lorien, I wonder would it make sense to try and take out Lorien here, and and uh, I guess they're waiting to put the elves to war in case I draw Cairden ships. Um, and at this point, I have drawn five strategy cards, so it's not totally unreasonable that I could have Cairden ships. So okay, so I guess they're waiting. I mean, I like Shadows on Misty Mountain. It's a great. It's just a great you know, two and a half points, two and a half dice worth of mustering in a very key location. But I did make Lorien pretty hard to take. So, okay. Anyway, they're focused on Gondor first. I think that makes sense. Um, 
so they get the Witch King. That's great. That's always really good. And they get Southrons and Easterlings toward war. Obviously really good too. And then, of course, I get Gandalf and they besiege Minas Tirith. And, you know, that was interesting there. They didn't um, they didn't besiege Minas Tirith right away, even when Gondor is at war. Um, had If I had more muster dice, I certainly would have um, mustered more into Minas Tirith in advance of the siege. But because I didn't want to give them a second ring just for, you know, one extra hit point or one extra leadership... Um, they actually did have some time. So they were sort of baiting me, I think, to to use the ring, um, a, a second ring, but I decided not to. Okay, so I go ahead and play um, Aomer here. I feel like I have some time for Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Um, I probably also have time for Aomer, but um, I th my plan temporarily is muster two elites and some regulars into Dol Amroth. And then when it go comes under siege, then additionally play um, the elite and, uh, leader. Okay. So, um, Denethor's folly and obviously that's awesome. So good way of controlling Minas Tirith. You know, this was a very efficient witch king turn to witch king, I think is really nice. And no, like nobody else from the free peoples have even made any progress towards war. So the fact that they got activated doesn't really hurt. And now you have the witch king. I, I think the only thing that I wonder about is there's nobody else near the Witch King. I, I, you know, obviously turn to Witch King is great, but I wonder if there were a few more actions that sort of brought armies to the front lines a little sooner than at the moment Gondor goes to war, um, you can then march in with the rest of the armies. Because what's going to happen now, if I'm just looking at this any additional musters I have at this point, I'm just going to buff up Dol Amroth and Pilargear. Now, maybe they're going to be able to take Pilargear and Dol Amroth relatively quickly, um, but I would anticipate, just looking at the board right here, that I'll probably be able to get some musters in before they arrive. Um, okay, so they got um, Fighting Urkai and Wormtongue. That's pretty cool. Um, and I got Book of Mazar Bowl and House of Stewards. So I'm definitely drawing some good Gondor mustering defense. I don't know that I'm going to get Boromir down to Gondor, but, you know, that would be cool if I could. My opponent did not have to allocate an eye there, um, but I think it was reasonably smart that they did, just because if you let the Fellowship get through Mordor, I mean Moria safely, that's just, you know, a little bit of a sad thing for shadow. So I, I think it makes sense to put at least one eye in there. And then I get this great role. So, you know, I have a lot of choices with this. Um, if I were tempted to go try and get a military victory, I have Book of Mazar Bowl. Um, I have House of Stewards with Boromir. So I could, you know, separate... Um, I mean, I could do a bunch of things here, but one of the things I thought about was separate companions to something like Old Ford or or Gladden Fields, right? I could get to Gladden Fields, which is a weird spot, but I could get to Gladden Fields and then I could send um, a level two companion, maybe Gimli, to Old Forest Road with my um, first character movement. And then I could play Book of Mazar Bull to Erebor and get the dwarves to war. That's three dice to get the dwarves to war. But while I'm doing that, I'm also going Gladden Fields, um, Aragorn or Strider gets to Eastamnet, and then I can move from Eastamnet one, two, three to Pilargear. Now I don't love being in Pilargear while the Southrons and Easterlings are going to be potentially right next to me with only two. Now, if I had dead men of Dunharrow, I would definitely do that. That'd be awesome. I would have five regulars in Pilar gear. I could crown Aragorn. It would be, it would be sweet. Given that I don't have that, my, um, my current plan is don't worry about getting the dwarves to war, but if I move once, I get to three movement with the fellowship. And then for three more movement, I can separate Strider with probably Boromir because I have House of Stewards. And then I can go Trollshaws, Holland, North Downs, Tharbad, Endwaith, Druwaith, ER. I don't know how to pronounce that. But I could end up in this in this uh, region, three away from Dol Amroth. And then I can move I can spend another character die. Or I could use Book of Mazarbul, which would be even better uh, in this case, because that way I can save a character die to um, 
to move the fellowship, right? So I'm spending, I'm using one character die, a palantir, um, to, so character die to, character die to move the fellowship, character die to separate Strider and Boromir, palantir to move Strider and Boromir, will of the West to crown Aragorn. So turn three, Aragorn and Dol Amroth with Boromir, while Gondor is at war, I can play this muster into Dol Amroth. I can play House of Stewards in Dol Amroth. Like that's going to be a pretty solid situation. But I don't know what's going to happen with the um, with the Southrons and Easterlings, right? Because if the Southrons and Easterlings get to war and then come to Umbar, I'm worried about having. I wouldn't prefer to have Strider stuck in Umbar. Um, and if the Southrons and Easterlings come to West Herondor, then I I don't really want to go to Pilargir. So I sort of want to wait and see what's going to happen. But um, I think I decide in the end to move the Fellowship first because I know that I still want to keep making some progress with the Fellowship. The chances of getting hit and revealed here are very low, uh, something like you know fifteen percent, I think. Right? They have to roll at least a six, and then. Um, and then reveal me from the hunt pool, which obviously they have better than 50-50 chance, but it, like there's still quite a few tiles that don't reveal me. 30% chance of hitting me, and then whatever this is. So probably like a 20, maybe a little less than 20% chance of revealing me. So I move first because um, I'm sort of assuming that they don't have Corsairs yet. Odds are relatively low, and these guys are probably going to come to West Toronto. That's what I'm thinking, but either way, I want to move the Fellowship, I think. You know, maybe there's some argument to just pass a little bit and see. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have just passed a bit to see what happens. And then if I wanted to go this northern route and put the dwarves to war also, um, I could have done that. I think I was reluctant. I was reluctant to do all that um, because it wouldn't move the fellowship at all. And um, it would be too easy to uh, counterattack Pilar gear. Um, so I think I preferred I preferred the Dol Amroth route. Anyway, um, I moved. Maybe that was a mistake right away, but I moved. And then I got hit, and then I got revealed. So all of that was sort of a what if, that I could have come down to Dol Amroth, but now I'm revealed. And so now what do I do? Do I go the high pass route or do I come into Moria? Obviously, it's not great to be revealed into Moria. But my thinking is um, I'm going to do it because there is still um, there's still quite a few eyes in here. Um, and I would like to... Um, I would like to heal up. I can just heal up in Lorien. And I'm sort of willing to go slow with the fellowship and try a military strategy. Um, you know, I, I have a bunch of military cards. I had an early Gandalf. Like, I have enough dice. I, sh I feel inclined to try, potentially make some military trouble. Maybe it's just going to buy the fellowship time. But um, but that's my plan. So uh, I go into Moria because I'm, I'm willing to stop in Lorien, heal a bit. And um, then we get a zero. So not as good as an eye, but still... Um, you know, no extra corruption. I'm now at two corruption. Let's see what Shadow has. N nothing to really punish me for being revealed. All right, they play many kings. I think that's great. So they're powering up. Um, they're powering up North Rune and South Rune, and then also near uh, near Harad. That makes a lot of sense. And then they get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. No, they think about it. And then yes, they get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. And now um, now I'm passing. And then they start moving armies around. So they get this army into Morinon, uh, they get a full stack in near Harad, and I start mustering into Gondor because um, I'm not getting Strider this round, or Aragorn this, this round, um, but I might as well use my musters to get um, to get Dol Amroth prepared. If there are Corsairs, I want to I be ready for it. Um, and then they move to West Herondor. So they don't have Corsairs. That makes sense. You know, odds were only one out of six that they did because they've only drawn four cards, uh, four strategy cards. And so um, that's fine. And so at this point, I muster a regular into Pilar gear just in case they're going to attack into Pilar gear. And I get my uh, first leader into Dol Amroth. And, um, you know, I, I use the Will of the West. I I think it's fine to use the Will of the West here for that. Um 
you know, it's such a flexible die, uh, but I'm not sure what else to do with it. I don't want to hide right now because if I do, then the um, shadow shadow could play a tile drawing card like Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane or Foul Thing and then reveal me in Moria and give give me bonus um get get a bonus tile sort of two tiles for for the price of one so i'm gonna wait um to hide i'm i do intend to use strider to hide but i'm gonna try and wait if i can all right so they they play, play the ring is mine i'm happy to see that i mean i'm not happy to see that but i'm also i'm obviously any corruption card is bad but uh for me but um i'm happy to know that they didn't draw a worse card for me at this point in the game like morgul wound or any other thing that punishes me for being revealed or um you know any of the tile drawing cards all right i go ahead and hide here i think it's hard for me to figure out exactly what to do um in the end i decide to hide i was thinking well what do i what else do i want to do with that character die um and these and these cards like maybe i was going to separate strider here with that but i just i didn't want to just separate him for for no reason to east him that if i had something like um you know dead men then i would i would certainly consider separating to east him that right now um but i don't have it and the odds of actually drawing it are, are pretty low um i also considered separating somebody to try and deal with book of Mazarbul, but um it's too far away. I just, it didn't seem like the right choice. So I hid with the character die and then I intend to play probably Immerhale of Dol Amroth because what else, what else productive can I do at this point? So, um, shadow moves armies and now they're going North. And I think that's a great play. Um, you know, I've defended Gondor pretty well. Um, there's not that much more I can do to improve it. I mean, I'll get one more muster in Dol Amroth, but otherwise, you know, I could keep mustering some regulars. Okay, but that, I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal for for Shadow. I think the issue is now they're they're really threatening do, and I have no defense up here. I can't even move. I didn't even get a regular into Old Forest Road, so I hate I hate for them to besiege um, Woodland Realm with only two units in it. But I just there's not much I can do, and this is a you know, this is a whole argument for maybe I could have just, you know, sent, I could have chosen, at, you know, on turn three to send companions out and get dwarves to war and get Strider crowned and all of those things. But, um, you know, looking at this situation here, this giant army would have been right outside Pilar gear and could have attacked into Aragorn. It wouldn't, I don't think that would have felt so good. So, all right. Um, Okay, I end up playing Immerhell of Dol Amroth. Obviously, I would prefer to save that until uh, they were under siege and then to reinforce the siege, but I didn't really have anything else productive to do with that die, so that's why I did it. And then my opponent gets this uh, force right into Old Forest Road, which I think is um, quite quite good. Um, and now they're going to be able to besiege Woodland Realm. So I'm not happy about that, but there wasn't much that I could have done differently other than not moving the fellowship at all that round and getting companions all over the map. And I, you know, at the time things were going well for the fellowship. So I wanted to keep going. All right. I'm very happy to see file of Galadriel, obviously happy to see cured and ships. The elves are not at war at all. Um, so I don't know exactly how useful they'll be in Gondor, but still it's, it's nice to see. Um, I decided to discard, I think house of stewards because, um, you know, Boromir isn't really making it down down south. It doesn't seem like it, certainly. Um, okay, and what did my opponent draw? On, on they went. Horde from the east. Okay. And they allocate one eye and then roll a whole bunch of Palantirs. And then I roll also a whole bunch of Palantirs. So this was certainly a weird turn. Um, you know, part of me is like, oh man, could I somehow get... Strider now, Book of Mazarbul. Maybe I should have separated him last round and then I could have moved him. Um, but in the end, I just decide to, to move um, because I don't want to get a two for one tile situation in Moria. So they hit me again. So, um, 
you know, so far there's been a hit on move two, on move three, and move four. And, you know, they have not been rolling that many eyes, but they've just been rolling well on the hunt. And sometimes, sometimes that happens. Um, you know, I'm not happy to see this um, and I get revealed. And so that's not good. Um, I take one corruption here because um, I don't want to lose Strider to a one. And then a three tile is drawn. And, you know, I, that's obviously not a good situation, um, but what can I do? So I don't want to just take three corruption to go up to six. That feels too much and a really long time to heal that down in Lorien. Um, so I take a random and it's risky. You know, there is some risk, but. I don't want to, I don't want to get too high in corruption. So I take a random and I get Mary and, um, you know, now I'm up to five, but Mary gets to go somewhere. So I could move, um, you know, I have Book of Miserable. So I'm thinking maybe I can move to Parth Celebrant and then I could like get Gandalf up to Erebor relatively quickly and get Erebor to war. Um, but I just didn't get enough character movement here to be able to mess around with that stuff. And so, you know, if I had another character die, maybe I would consider that. But because I have through a day and a night, and because Dol Golder is empty, I decide to put Mary in Lorien in the hopes that someday the elves will be at war. And then I can sneak Mary out to Dimrald Dale and then uh, through a day and a night to Dol Golder. So this one hobbit um, in Lorien is going to get to. Um, potentially turn on through a day and a night. So the elves are not at war and, you know, and now I have two reasons, right? I would, I would love the elves to be at war for Cured and Ships and I would love the elves to be at war so I can do throw, through a day and a night and threaten Dol Golder. So I don't know. It's not obvious to me where my extra two victory points are going if I manage to go a military victory route. Um, but, you know, it's it's something you know, any time as free people, or of course a shadow that you can get a stronghold without any combat at all. Um, you know, that's really great. It's just a very efficient use of, of dice. So I'm not feeling great about the fellowship and there are just tons of red tiles now. Um, so, okay. Two of the red tiles, I guess. Um, I, uh, hide using Strider's ability and then my opponent draws a strategy card. They've been very consistently drawing strategy cards, which I think is um, certainly a good choice, given how well uh, they've been harassing the Fellowship as it is. I, I don't think they... I think getting strategy cards makes a lot of sense. And Corsairs of Umbar is really useful in a round where you um, drew a bunch of Palantirs. So, um, you know, I'm glad here that I managed to buff up Dol Amroth pretty well. Um... So I don't sort of need to worry about that right here. All right, they play give it to us. Now there are three red tiles. Um, I'm obviously not happy about that. And then um, they muster, they start to muster up or think. I think that makes a lot of sense. That's always good. And then they muster up th three regulars w using the voice, which is also good. You know, now they're starting to build up a force here that could, um, you know, maybe besiege Lorien, maybe go up to Rivendell. Um, you know, if you invest a few musters in this region, you can merge these armies and go attack Rivendell. And the elves aren't at war, so so that's certainly a possibility. Um, I play Vile here because what else can I play? Uh, I don't want to play through in a day and a night yet because the elves aren't at war yet. Um, Eagles are coming, not useful. Book of Mazarble, not useful. Curtain ships can't play it. There's another way. Can't. Yeah, you know, I I didn't even think about playing this. I always think about holding this no golem as guide, but but I guess I could have played this here. Um I I like saving it. It's just uh it's just pretty good. So yeah, so I save it. Anyway, file of glad rule obviously makes sense to play. And then my opponent draws another strategy card, and I use this moment to um get my armies moving to the right places. And then they take Iron Hills, which makes sense, and then moves move back to Umbar. So this was a particularly efficient 
um, move for them because I got that regular out of the way. They get to get their army in position in Iron Hills. And now I see that Corsairs of Umbar is coming. And because I'm starting to think about military victory chances and because Dol Amroth is pretty nicely defended, I don't really mind this too much. Um, you know, obviously I don't want to lose Dol Amroth and if Dol Amroth doesn't hold very well, then that'll be pretty bad because then Gondor will be completely taken over. But, um, Dol Amroth should be able to hold pretty well. And, um, and then Umbar becomes, you know, potentially a juicy target. So, um, right. So because I don't have anything particularly playable to do, I, I again didn't really think about playing there as another way that maybe I should have. Um, I decided to use a ring here and I want to move again because my opponent again only hits me on a five or a six, um, you know, one third chance of hitting me, uh, and then probably like only about a 15% chance of revealing me. My plan is get the fellowship into Lorien, start healing down this five damage, spend some time getting Strider down to Pilar gear because now Pilar gear is going to be a perfectly safe place for Strider to go because this giant army is going to be over in Dol Amroth. So, and then this army in Minas Tirith is dealing with Minas Tirith. So Pilar gear actually has now become a safe, relatively safe spot for Aragorn to get crowned. Um, so that's my plan, and that's why I use the ring here. Um, but I get revealed again. So I can't go into Lorien when I'm revealed, and therefore I just keep moving, right? I take one uh, cor corruption damage. I, I don't want to risk losing Strider at this point and for one damage, and then uh, my opponent plays Corsair's Fumbar, and we go into Siege. My opponent could have considered leaving a regular in Umbar, but I think it makes sense to bring everyone because you have this army of three units right here in West Torondor. So, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't have used a ring. Obviously both times I used a ring to do an extra movement, um, against, you know, relatively low chances of getting hit. Um, I got caught and revealed and it was unpleasant for the fellowship. So that goes to show you the rings have, uh, the rings know who their master was. Okay, but um you know, I this isn't great for me, the but the shadow military isn't going too too fast. I am in trouble with the with the um fellowship though because they're just up there at 6 corruption and I just that's going to be it's going to be tricky to deal with. If I could have healed it off in Lorien, I would have been fine with it. And now coming down to Minas Tirith, I don't know, it just seems it seems pretty tough um to heal it in Minas Tirith. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. I draw Athalos though. So that is great. And I draw Spirit of Mordor, which is also great. It's a good scouts effect. Happy to see that for um, for any battle that's going to happen in uh, Helm's Deep to make sure I can get these units into uh, from Rohan, from Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep or to Westman if I need to, to get those in. And um, and then also it is it is possible if Shadow plays like a, the... Um, put a Isengard elite unit in Minas Tirith or someplace like that, I can play Spirit of Mordor to sort of cancel that out. So very happy to see this. I decided to discard Book of Mazarbul because um, it's, I think, the least useful combat card and I don't anticipate playing it. It does, um, you know, if I wanted to use it to move companions, I am still thinking about taking Strider out, coming into Pilar gear um, and crowning him maybe I would want to use um, Book of Mazarbul to let him move there, but now I'm only four spaces away. So if I can hide the Fellowship, move once with the Fellowship, then I can use a character die to separate him straight to Pilar gear. So it's only a single die to separate him. Okay, so they allocate one eye and they roll one more, and then I get this beautiful roll. So this is, this is exactly what I need. I can use any die to hide, like the muster. I can use a character die to move once. Then I can use a character die to separate Strider into Pilar gear. Then I can use the Will of the West to crown him in Pilar gear. Obviously, I'm not um, <clears throat> super excited about um, uh, a Day Without Dawn, right? Because there's a decent chance that my opponent has Day Without Dawn. But... Um, 
I feel like there have been quite a few chances for them to already play it if they had it. So I feel like, you know, maybe there's a chance they don't have it in hand. And if they didn't have it in hand already, then um, maybe it's like a pretty, pretty safe bet. Or I, I don't know. It's risky, but but I feel inclined. I really wanted to get <laughs> Strider before down in Dol Amroth, um, Aragorn before down in Dol Amroth, but it didn't happen. At least now maybe I can get in Pilar gear. So I've just been thinking about it for a long time. Obviously, Athelos, it would be great to play Athelos. Maybe that's enough to save the Fellowship. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to have quite enough dice to um, play Athelos and also get Strider out and move the Fellowship and crown him in Pelargir this round. So um, we'll see what happens. All right, so my opponent um, musters up more in Orthanc, and then I go ahead and move the Fellowship, and they're safe. <laughs> this is the first safe move, safe move in like one, two, three, four movements. Um, and so I say weird, that's a strange feeling and we laugh about it. So, um, you know, sometimes the fellowship is going to move safely. That's nice. All right. My opponent musters up even more in Orthanc and, um, then they say, let's go ahead and try this. And they attack Minas Tirith and they play Deadly Strife. I can't play any card and they get five hits. Um, and I get three. So, you know, that was awesome for them. That was a nice play. I think it's worth trying. And then they say, mm, let's press. And then they press and then they get um, then they get two hits and um, they actually got three hits. They only needed two and I get zero. So um, I think that was really well played combat on their part. I mean, I think, you know, that might have been slightly above average for a number of hits, but Deadly Strife is really powerful. And if you know your opponent can't play something like Daylight or something like that to, to restrict your um, combat dice, like that is the benefit of Denethor's Folly. So, you know, they played it, they had it sitting there for a while, and then they capitalized on it here. And I, you know, I think that was a good play. And now they're, this army is free to move around and do what they need to do and hopefully take over the rest of Gondor. I'm not sure exactly that this is enough to take care of Gondor, but um, but we'll see. Okay, so they go ahead and use a ring right here to move um, Nazgul around. And, um, you know, I think that makes sense. They're going to they're gonna continue on against uh, Dol Amroth. I think that they are... Assuming that I'm going to continue to move the fellowship and try and make progress with the fellowship, but um, I've sort of decided I'm going to try for some military shenanigans. Um, Umbar is relatively undefended. If they get a bad roll, I can muster up a little in Pilar gear at the end of next uh, at, the, at the beginning of next round and try and take Umbar. Um, I still have this whole Dol Golder uh, through day and night sneak attack, um, sneak attack with uh, with Mary. So. So we'll see what happens. Again, elves are still not at war. So, you know, that's a problem. But And so what I do here is I use the political action because um, I want to threaten Cairdan's ships to be able to defend Dol Amroth if I want to. Um, and really, I want to get the elves to war so that Lorien, um, so that this army and Lorien can go take Dol Guldur. That is what I'm thinking. Um, and so I'm going to be able to separate Strider with this character die and crown him with this will of the West. And then I still have an extra muster to do it. And I want to, um, wait as long as possible just to avoid any sort of sneaky stuff where, where this army comes off of Dol Amroth and, and attacks Pilar gear, right? I want Strider to be able to come to Pilar gear where no, no big army is adjacent to him and then crown him. And then if I need to next round, run away. Like if this army comes out of Dol Amroth, then I can run away with it. Um, so this is like one of the advantages of the action tokens. Obviously, I'm very happy to get the elves to war and that, that action is useful, but also just the tempo of getting to delay a little bit is good. And then my opponent uses a um, army die here to attack. And, you know, I think that makes sense. They have some, they have deadly strife that, you know, obviously a lot of good cards here. Um Maybe, I don't know, maybe they could have drawn a um, drawn a card first. I don't know exactly what their what their plan is. I guess they're gonna cycle some cards here, so so that could make sense. All right, they play onslaught here, which is interesting. I you know, 
I wonder about Deadly Strife. It worked out so well in the other combat. Obviously, you don't. I guess I can play a card here. I haven't I haven't played any daylights, so I could easily have a daylight here. Um, I play Heroic Death because um, I had six cards, and I know that I'm going to. Um, I intend to muster a unit in Polar Gear with this muster die, and then move Strider, and then Crown Strider. So I don't. I'm not playing any more cards this round, and therefore I don't want to draw cards. Um, I don't want to, it would be sort of a waste to not, to not play a card here. And that feels like the best one. Obviously I'm saving through a day and a night for this sneak attack for Mary. I'm, um, saving this version of heroic death because there's another way in case the fellowship makes progress. Athelos is a powerful healing effect. Also Andrew is powerful. Cairden ship, super powerful. And I like having a scouts. So that's why, and it's not even playable in this combat. So that's why I play heroic death. They end up in this combat getting no hits <laughs> And, um, and I get three. So, you know, I think one of the things that I have learned about War of the Ring is that try and stay, like I try and stay, uh, emotionally tranquil, even when Minas Tirith, you know, just got annihilated in one attack, five hits and then three hits and just gone. Um, and so, you know, sometimes the luck can swing your way. And obviously the fellowship hasn't been doing that great, but, you know, just try and try and keep your chances open. Who knows? I did draw Athelos. Maybe I'll, you know, who knows what can happen. So um, I do three hits and then my opponent uses four units, takes four hits to do Onslaught. And, you know, if you play Onslaught, I think it makes sense to give it a try. But, um, but this is pretty rough. You'd have to get pretty lucky to to get like three or four hits here, but maybe it's worth taking the shot. Uh, as it turns out, they get two, which is expected. Um, uh, and I lose two, but now I still have five regulars in there. If the elves were um, at war, maybe I would have lost um, more regulars and and then used Cairden ships if I can get the elves to war. But I'm kind of thinking, let Dol Amroth hold for a while. I think it's going to be able to hold with those five regulars and two leaders. Um, and then use Cairden ships on Pilar gear to muster up um, Aragorn's army. So that's why I decide to lose the um, elites and just keep it full. Because now I'm thinking Cairden ships is not going to be played in Dol Amroth. It's going to be played in Pilar gear. Because I only have a single elite left in Gondor, which I am now immediately mustering. So at this moment, I now have no more elites in um, in Gondor's reinforcement pool. All right, so my opponent um, forgot to draw for the Witch King. And because this is a tournament game, um, typically the rules are a little more strict, which is that um, because the Witch King's ability is optional, I said in a previous video that it was um, mandatory, but it's not. The Witch King's ability to draw a card at the end of the round is um, is optional, and so it shadows responsibility to remember. And according to the sort of official tournament rules, if you clear the die, um, then that's sort of you've you've finished your chances for drawing the card. Um, or if you declare for round two of combat, if you declare your card at the start of round two, then you've also missed your chance to draw for the Witch King. Um, but we're not that serious, you know? So like I had the right to say, nope, sorry, you missed it, but that's not how I wanted to play. It's round one of the, you know, beginning of the tournament. Um, it's, it's more fun to just let my opponent draw the card. Um, so I just said, as long as you don't draw day without dawn, because if they had drawn day without dawn on that draw, I would feel really bad because I am now going to, uh, um, move okay so we anyway i mustered in polar gear then they drew their card and then they played hill trolls um so they mustered up in um old forest road if they had drawn day without dawn i would have been upset because i literally just moved strider to polar gear and i felt like they didn't have day without dawn because they probably would have played it by now um so i went for it obviously a little risky because they've drawn so many strategy cards but i wanted to give it a try and now the question is how many more people do you bring and you even do this. Like I had Athelos. I could have healed like two. And um, and then, you know, maybe even three. And kept Strider in longer and played that. So I guess, I guess I feel like at this point, Fellowship is on 
six corruption. I I do want to get Strider, or maybe not get Strider, but then um, just run with the Fellowship. I guess I could have. I could have run maybe two or even three more movement, but I just can't lose that many more companions. And the, also remember in Mordor, this is not looking pretty with these three red tiles in here. Um, I certainly could get lucky, right? I could roll well on Athelos. I could um, hit this minus two in Mordor. Um, but at best, I'm making it to Mordor next round. Potentially not even making it to Mordor next round. If I, you know, keeping Strider in and just trying to move. But I feel like Dol Amroth could you know, fall in not that long. They can muster up again and unbar and, and come in. Um, and then the North is not looking that good. Certainly Woodland Realm is going to fall. And at some point, Helm's Deep is going to fall because this is a giant army in Orthanc. So it just, it feels to me like trying to rush with the Fellowship is just going to be too long. Like, I don't think that I have like the four or five rounds it would need to actually destroy the ring from this point. Um, but if I can get the elves to war and I can sneak into Dol Guldur, it's possible I could win a military victory next round or two, maybe two rounds from now. Um, and I think that my, you know, strongholds can hold well enough for two rounds. I don't think, I don't think shadow can get to 10 victory points in two rounds. So, um, I decide to bring, um, Boromir and, uh, Gimli. So after all that logic, I was like, you know what? I'm going for military victory. I'm giving up on the fellowship. Um, I decide to leave Legolas. I would have taken Legolas and and maybe um, it may be Pippin, but I decide to leave them because I need to get the elves to war next round. And um, if... I roll like just a whole bunch of character dice or a whole bunch of palantirs or something like that. Um, I can separate Legolas to Lorien and then use Legolas's ability to get um, the elves to war. So that's why I leave Legolas. And then I think, okay, you know what? Maybe my opponent's going to start, you know, defending in some way. And therefore it'll be good to also have, um, also have Pippin with, with this force, here. Um, and I think I'm going to have enough leadership down here. Assuming I get Aragorn, I'll have four leadership. There is one more regular, uh, one more uh, leader in the Gondor pool. So I could get, that could put me up to five leadership if I need to, but four leadership is, you know, pretty effective. So that's my thinking of why I did this. And maybe, maybe I'm still hedging the fellowship. Like I still could play Athelas. It's a little weird that I just separated Strider out. If I wanted to, you know, bet on the fellowship, then I think I would have played Athelas as a, as a card effect. Um, so I don't know. Like this is obviously, this makes me really nervous, but I'm like, look, I, I can play some military attacks. And I, and I think this is what makes War of the Rings so wonderful because the fellowship is doing poorly. In my mind, I have now switched to a military victory, but my opponent doesn't know that yet, and they're probably going to still allocate some resources to messing with the fellowship, and so um, that's to my advantage, right? There's a Nazgul here, and and also if they allocate absolutely no resources, they put no eyes in, and then they roll no eyes. Like I, I potentially could make some progress again. Maybe you know this army is gonna instead of going on an attack, we'll go like recapture Minas Tirith. That could be possible, um, and then I can maybe heal in Minas Tirith. I don't know. It's it's a little messy. I, I don't know how that's gonna work, but um, okay. So that's what happens, and then my opponent plays foul thing, right? So I, so like this is yet another example of um, you know being able to have my opponent maybe not know, like it's not exactly obvious that what's going to happen, um, that I've sort of switched to the military mode. It's like relatively obvious, but it's still possible that the fellowship can make some progress. And what else could they have played? I mean, I guess they could have played shadows on the misty mountain. Maybe, maybe that would be better there. Don't worry about messing with the fellowship here. Um, but, um, they draw two and then they get Legolas, uh, which actually messes with my plans a little bit because if I get a bad roll next round, um, I'm not going to be able to get the elves to war, 
which is a whole part of my, a major part of my um, military victory plan, because I, I think that I'm going to be able to sneak into Dol Guldur if I get the elves to war. Um, and I need to play Cairden ships to reinforce this army that Aragorn is in. So, um, but most importantly, my opponent did not have Day Without Dawn. I got to um, crown Aragorn. So that that is really good. My opponent draws Cruel Weather here, and then King is revealed. Obviously, that's a nice... Uh, appropriate timing. The deck is uh, giving thematically appropriate cards. It's always satisfying. I draw Dane Ironfoot's Guard um, and I and uh, Bilbo Song. And so I got rid of Spirit of Mordor and I love getting to play Scouts. I mean, that's just a super powerful combat effect. Um, but I guess I hadn't really given up on the Fellowship 100% yet. It's a little silly. Like, why did I keep Bilbo Song um, over Scouts if I'm going for military victory? Like, Bilbo Song is not a useful, not nearly as useful as Scouts if you're going for military victory. Um, but you know, if I get if I get three from Athelos or two from one or two from Athelos, two from Bilbo Song, and then another from there's another way. Like I've drawn the three best healing cards right here. Um, so you know, maybe I could still make it in. It's possible if like all the rest of the hunt suddenly starts going great. Um, maybe I'll try it. So I decide to hold on to Bilbo Song. Two corruption is a lot of corruption to heal. All right. My opponent allocates one eye and then rolls one. And then I get this beautiful roll, right? Like this is just an awesome roll. And my odds, the odds of my opponent drawing Day Without Dawn at this point are quite low because I'm sure they would have played it last round if they had it. Um, so they probably don't have it, but still in case they top decked it, I'm still going to use a Will of the West first. I never want to lose two Wills of the West to Day Without Dawn. So anytime I have two, I'm always going to use one if I can. Um, and I decide to just muster up, right? I'm just going to muster up more in Pilar here. This army is going to cause trouble. Um, we see what's going to happen. I'm going to get the elves to war at the end of this round. And then I'm going to sneak into Dol Guldur at the start of next round. That's my plan. And because I have an action token, I'm going to be able to take the last action of this round. And it's probably going to work unless my opponent musters into Dol Guldur. But that's pretty hard to see, right? Like if you end your turn with this army in Lorien, it, it is it is hard to see. But I did set it up for quite some time, right? Like you, we said, when when uh, Mary got separated, I actually had through a day and a night in my hand, and I could foresee that this, you know, there was a chance for, for this to happen. I didn't know for sure it was going to happen, um, but you sort of play to your play to your chances. And now I'm going for the military attack. Okay, um, and it's all because of Celeborns, right? Like this this early early um elite makes this army quite formidable and i got to cycle just more character uh, more strategy cards deeper into the deck which helped me get to through a day and a night okay so my opponent um chooses to retreat out of west Herondor. i think that makes a lot of sense i was legitimately threatening umbar um but because they rolled enough musters i didn't think that if i attacked immediately into west Herondor that i'd be able to take umbar i do have cared in ships so I could get the elves to war. Maybe it would have been better instead of mustering there, just attacking straight into West Herondor. But I only had five hit points, um, and it just it just felt like that was that was pretty rough. Maybe that would have been better. Um, maybe this army would be, would have been big enough. Um, I guess I feel like I can muster more. I can get into Umbar, or I can go and threaten minus Morgul. But the reality is. I need to take Dol Guldur, and that's actually the more important sneak attack. I think that, um, and, I, and therefore I need to use these two army dice to um, get the elves to war, or or will the West. But I, I have to spend two dice to muster, and then I have to, you know, have another die to maybe uh, move move the army from from Lorien to South End and Vale, or maybe Lorien to Dimrel Dale, and then at the start of next round play through Dana Knight. Um, and I also sort of want to keep the fellowship moving a little bit because my opponent might put some more resources into it. And who knows? Maybe, maybe it's still possible. Um, okay, so they retreat to Umbar. They gather up in North Dunland. I think that makes a lot of sense. More, Moria is certainly a possible target. And, you know... With Shadows on Misty Mountain, 
that's an eight-unit army that they can build up in Moria, and they can come take Lorien. And so I'm definitely a little worried about my um, my uh, Elves to War plan with Through a Day and a Night if uh, they build up an army here. So we'll see what happens. I think they're going to be more focused on Umbar. Um, so, okay. So I keep mustering the Elves. I use another Will of the West because I know that I'm going to want to use that. I don't need to risk losing that die. And then my opponent attacks into Fords of Eisen here. You know, I think that makes sense. I feel really sad that I don't have that Scouts card. Um, hopefully this regular and one leader is going to survive. Uh, but it doesn't. They get two hits. I get one hit and then they move in this beautiful army into Fords of Eisen, which... You know, they leave three three hit points here to um, hedge against Ents. Obviously, there's a quite a good chance that I could have Ents by now with six character cards drawn. Um, I don't know exactly what the right number is. Um, yeah. Seems, seems okay. Um, all right. I need to... I want to make sure Helm's Deep is defended. And the thing about going for a military victory is that... You definitely need to spend your resources mustering up your armies and going and taking shadow strongholds, but you need to at least be somewhat sensitive of making your strongholds hard to take also. And so because I have Bilbo Song, Athelos, and there's another way, I, I'm still thinking there's a chance I could do some um, the ring. I mean, it's possible. So, But for that to be possible, I need to make sure I just defend my stronghold. So I, so I get Helm's Deep as full as I can. And um, and then I move from Las Arnach into Pilar Gear, filling up that army. And then my opponent musters an Umbar. I think that's clearly correct. Uh, this is a this is a big threat. And then I move the Fellowship once because you know good to continue making progress, seeing what happens. And then it does um, alle uh, cost Shadow a die next round. So that's my thinking. Um, and chances of getting hit um, are low, but of course I get hit again, and I get. Um, revealed. And I did it on that action instead of passing because um, I knew that there was some chance that I would get hit. There was some chance I would take damage. And then I could separate um, I could separate Pippin into um, Helm's Deep to make Helm's Deep stronger. I could also separate Pippin into Lorien or Fangorn so that Gandalf is free to go somewhere. Um, but I decide that um, Helm's Deep is best. Maybe I'll draw Riders of Theoden you know, not a great chance, but I potentially could be drawing a couple of strategy cards before uh, my opponent takes Helm's Deep. And if I do that, then I can play Riders of Theoden. Uh, it's the one card that you can, that is a way to reinforce Helm's Deep after it's under siege. So um, if you have a companion in Helm's Deep and you have Riders of Theoden, then you can reinforce Helm's Deep under siege. That's the only card that does it. So um, that's why I end up doing it. I'm sort of playing to that odds. And also, I just want Helm's Deep to be hard to take. So that's what I do. Um, obviously, it's not great for the Fellowship. And now I'm like, okay, definitely going military victory. You know, Fellowship has no chance. Not not going to not gonna spend any resources anymore on the Fellowship. Um, Helm's Deep gets under siege. Uh, Rohan is one away from war. And then my opponent musters more into Umbar. Again, I think that makes a lot of sense because I could have besieged Umbar if they don't if they don't use that. Maybe you could wait on that die, but I, th I think it makes total sense. Um, I draw a card here because I want to make sure I'm going last so that my um, move from Lorien to Dimrald Dale is as camouflaged as possible. My plan is that I'm going to use this muster action to muster the elves to war, and then I'm going to use the character die to move from Lorien to Dimrald Dale, and then at the start of next round, Dimrald Dale to Dol Guldur. So I think that's very hard to see, and what it seems like I'm doing, uh, which I am doing also, is getting prepared for Curtain ships, which I am, and trying to get Woodland Realm... Um, you know, mustered up before this army comes crashing in. I'm not going to be able to do that. They're saving appropriately, saving a, um, um, an army die, but, um, you know, that is what it is. I drew Grey Company. Um, I had a full hand, so, you know, that's not 
um, the best time to draw a card, but I knew that these dice were already sort of spoken for. Um, great Company is a great card because uh, Brave Stand, you know, Brave Stand is, uh, they're minus three dice because I have three companions here. Um, and Great Company could draw me two more strategy cards. If you do not have a, an elite unit, then, um, then you don't have to do this part. So I can just use a character die to draw two strategy cards if I want to at some point in the future because there are no Gondor elite units. Um, and by the way, you don't need to be in a stronghold or a city or anything. You can be out in the field anywhere and, uh, and use this card. So, and now I get rid of Bilbo's song, which is, you know, if you're going for a corruption, if you're going to destroy the ring, it's totally crazy to ever <laughs> discard Bilbo's song, right? It's, it's a great, great healing card. Um, but if you are going for a military victory, then that card is pretty useless. And so, you know, I know that I'm doing that now. My opponent isn't sure yet. So we'll see, but they're going to, you know, figure it out relatively soon. Okay, so they're drawing a character card here. I don't know exactly why they draw a character card here. Um, you know, maybe they're trying to get something like the Witch King Commands, uh, the Nazgul's are abroad, uh, Grand. Any of those are um, quite powerful Palantir effects. So, you know, I think, I think maybe that's what they're doing. I'm not exactly sure, though. Okay, um, I get the elves to war as my plan is, and then they attack Woodland Realm, which is obviously correct because if they don't, then I can must start mustering into Woodland Realm. Um, and then I have this hidden move of, or well concealed move of going to Dimmerald Dale. And, um, you know, that's again the advantage of the action tokens. So the, I was able to, with one action token, get Aragorn relatively safely into Pilar gear. And um, with the other action token, I was able to get to uh, Dimmerald Dale, allowing me to take Dol Guldur at the start of next round. So um, I draw, I will go alone and power two great. I will go alone, obviously unplayable for the card effect, but Daring Defiance, when you have a single Hobbit, is super great, right? Like I could use that to defend against any counterattack against Dol Guldur. Um, no quarter is great. Power to great is a good effect too, because, um, I'm leaving Lorien open. And so that just makes Lorien a little harder to take, but I'm very happy with Dane Ironfoot's guard to defend Erebor. Valor is a good combat effect through a day and night, obviously is key. Athlos, I mean, Andril's obviously key. Cairden Ships is key. Brave Stand is a huge combat effect. So even though these are really great cards, I think my other effects are better. Heroic Death is obviously very useful to hold your um, captured Shadow Stronghold. So you end up taking a Shadow Stronghold and then Shadow ends up coming back and trying to recapture it. And then you use Heroic Death to, to hold it against Shadow. So I'm definitely king onto Heroic Death. So in the end, I end up discarding... Um, uh, the two cards that I drew, even though they were really nice. So uh, feel free to leave in the comments if you would have discarded something different there, but I feel pretty pretty confident about that. All right, and then they roll, uh, they allocate one eye, which they had to, and then they roll this insane muster roll. Um, and and I get, a, you know, a very nice, you know, this is a great, this is a great roll here uh, for me too. Plenty of attacks to do what I need to do. Um, but obviously I do not want to see this many musters, right? Like this is just way too many musters. They can defend a lot of places with this. Um, but, you know, I got to start somewhere. So I use my Will of the West because I don't want to risk Day Without Dawn. Um, and I play through a day and a night and get to Dol Guldur. So that's obviously very efficient. I am pleased um, to have this strong army. Like this is going to be hard. Certainly this army would have trouble retaking it. And though they did get a lot of musters, they got very low uh, attacks, right? This is just only two attacks on eight dice where you'd expect four attacks on eight dice. So, and no character dice. So they can't sort of reposition their Nazgul to wherever the battlefront is. Okay, so um, I'm happy with that. That was certainly hard uh, for them to see. And then they um, muster up in 
Angmar and Orthanc. I like the Orthanc muster because, you know, because of Ents and it's possible. I don't know. Maybe it's not the super highest priority. Um, I, I'm tempted a little to muster in Lorien. I mean, in Moria and maybe just get this army to come take Lorien while I have the chance. And then on the way, you know, on the way to Dol Guldur, basically. Um, I don't know. What's their force pool? So they have three, they have three elites. They also have one elite, the uh, one um, Isengard elite that they can muster. They could also come up to, um, potentially come up to Rivendell. I mean, I could muster in Rivendell. It's not, it's not exactly obvious. I think, I think the issue is, if you feel like free people may have given up on the fellowship, then their only way to win is a military victory. So I think bringing a large army to come attack Dol Guldur, when you have this many musters, may be right. I mean, you end up in Dimmeraldale, and as long as I don't win this round, um, you'll have a big army in Dimmeraldale. I don't know. Angmar doesn't feel super useful to me because the north is not at war. And therefore, the only way for me to take Angmar is if I go like the elves all the way to Angmar. I guess it's possible. But I didn't, if I had a whole bunch of army musters, then I could do these sort of simultaneous movements, Pelargir west to Rondor, west to Rondor near Harad, near Harad, far Harad, while simultaneously moving the elves um, towards Etmores and Angmar. And then I could get four victory points that way. But given that I don't have that, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't feel super dangerous. And then there is, there is monsters roused. Um, so I, yeah, it's not exactly clear what to do, but I'm, I might try Moria first. All right. I play Cared and Ships here and, um, I've basically now committed myself to coming up to, um, coming up to Mordor and it is theoretically possible that I could win this round. I could go, I could play Cared and Ships in Pelargir, then I could go one movement to Asgiliath, another movement to North Athelion, another movement to um, Minus Morgul, and then my fourth die attacking into Minus Morgul winning the game. Um, so I think I just want to threaten that, and by doing it now, um, they won't be able to muster as much in Minus Morgul. Um, realistically, probably, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that this round. I'm going to have to wait till next round because they'll be able to defend Minus Morgul. But then they probably will have trouble defending both Baradur and Morinon and Minus Morgul all simultaneously. So I play Cairden Ships and then um, they muster an Umbar again, which is okay. But I think probably Minus Morgul is the bigger threat. Um, and so I think I would have spent that muster into Minus Morgul. And then if the... If the free people go south to west to Rondor, then you still get to muster into Umbar. And if they go to um, to Asgiliath, then you can muster again in Minus Morgul. I don't know. Could could this army um, in Umbar hold against this army? Probably. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so maybe it makes sense and you want to get a fourth, a fourth elite in there. Um because this does let you get a fourth elite if I if I head south, and it is one closer, so I get one extra attack this round, which is nice. Um, okay, so I decide to go for Asgiliath. I thought about coming towards the Witch King just to kill him, but in the end, I think this I think that my um, free people, cities, and strongholds are going to hold enough so that this army is free to go about its business trying to conquer someplace. And at this point, it seems like Minus Morgul is probably the uh, safest spot. All right, so they muster an elite <clears throat> in Minus Morgul. I go to North Thillian. They muster another elite in Minus Morgul. And then um, I attack Minus Morgul. I'm happy. I feel like there's a decent chance I could take out this army, right? Like, I definitely have chances of that, particularly because I have Andrew. So I have two automatic hits. Um, I could roll some sixes. Uh, I have Valor, right? I have chances. Um, but they have the King is Revealed which is beautiful. Um, 
he is very revealed. He is, in fact, right here at our gates. <laughs> so that's a very appropriate play of the king is revealed. Um, and they get a Nazgul and two regulars into minus Morgul. So this is a beautifully defended stronghold. I am, I feel like, not going to win this round. I'm not even going to try. I don't want to spend my resources on that. Um, but I decide to pass here. I could move to Gorgoroth if, particularly if they have the card that musters um, five units in Gorgoroth and five units in Nurn. Like, I definitely don't want to see that here. Um, a mustering of Long Planned War. But do they have that? No, they don't have Mustering of Long Planned War. Right. So, um, but I feel like I have to risk it because they can just walk into Lorien. And I really don't want to give up two victory points for free um, because I know that I'm not winning this round. So if I'm not winning this round, then I want to make sure they can't race me to 10 victory points. Now, I think it's relatively unlikely, but it's certainly possible that Helm's Deep could go their way. And that could just be one attack, right? That could be um, the Fighting Urukai, which they have. They actually have fighting Urukai in hand, right? So this could be one die, two victory points for them. Um, Woodland Realm, that's another two victory points. That puts them up to six. And um, if they get Lorien, that puts them uh, up to eight. And so, um, and then they could get Pilar Gear and Dale, right? So if I'm not going to win this round... I want to make sure Lorien is defended, and therefore I save this die to muster in Lorien if they threaten it. And in that case, I will defend it. If they don't threaten it, then I will move into Gorgoroth with this army so that I can threaten Berendur. But, um, so that's why I have to pass here. That's my thinking. So they move armies into Gorgoroth and, um, and then Dimmerald Dale. And you know, I think the Dimmerald Dale move is great. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should have just gone for Gorgoroth as it was. Um, but I, they would have just waltzed right into to Lorien. And then I wouldn't have won this round. And then they could have raced me. So I guess that was my thinking. Maybe that's wrong. Leave in the comments if you, if you would have moved to Gorgoroth. Because now seeing this, you're like, yeah, I see why you wanted to move to Gorgoroth. That would have been better. Um, but that's how it goes. Uh, so I muster my elite and I, you know, could have mustered a regular and also a, uh, regular in Pilar gear or something like that. But I need these two elven regulars to be able to reduce these two elven elites. Um, because I have no elven regulars in my force pool. So it's unlikely that I would need to reduce these into, into regulars, um, particularly because I have companions here. So maybe that's, maybe that's moot, but, um, I guess that was my thinking. So that's why I did that. All right. Um, and then they do some army movements and just basically take over Gondor here. I think that, um, you know, maybe these these ten units into Gorgoroth, maybe you could have left a little behind um in Mornon. I I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so um they get armies moving and um then they use the ring here to completely take over um Gondor. I think it's nice to take that over. You know, if you manage to repel this attack, then um you know, that's obviously good. You want to be able to win the game. But I think that um, I might not have used my last ring, you know, because you don't know what you're going to roll next round. Maybe you're going to get a good roll, but maybe you're going to get a bad roll. And so, like, this muster is useful. These are two empty strongholds. Just, you know, putting... I realize that Shadow does not have... You know, there, there's only one regular, uh, one elite left. But, you know, you could have put a regular in Moranon, a regular in Baradur, just to start mustering them up. Um, it's, you know, it's not, it's not that great, but I, I think, I think the bigger deal is just um, these musters can be useful because this army probably is going to go somewhere. And I just don't want to use my last ring when I don't know how badly I'm going to roll next round. Okay. But they did that. I mean, it is, it is nice to take over Gondor. I give you that. Um, 
All right, they get their their fourth red tile. Um, I get my second blue tile, and um, they get rid of the red tile. Obviously, that's correct. Um, and I get hope unlooked for. You know, no quarter is a nice combat effect. Um, they confirm that I did not move the fellowship last round, and therefore they put in zero eyes. Obviously, that's the correct thing to do against a military attack. And they roll only one eye. So obviously, I would have preferred to roll that they rolled a whole bunch of eyes, but you know that's how it goes. They did get three musters, and those are not as useful. Um, and they don't have a ring now, and they don't have the mouth of Sauron. So um, th these are a couple of wasted dice for them. So even though they only rolled one eye, they sort of rolled four useless um, dice. Um, and or not useless but not as useful as it could be um and five attacks pretty average um i get i get four attacks that's also average for me and um yeah that's fine so i attack obviously into gorgoroth and now they're going to sort of be forced to either um retreat into mornon or Baradur. so um i played a card and then they rolled two dice and they say oops and then they play um my combat card and they say uh they, i meant to do f2 and so um it's weird that they rolled two dice when in fact that is the number of dice they were supposed to roll because of brave stand and i mentioned this um because i had three companions in here so they're only supposed to roll two dice and i mentioned this because this is a tournament and so we're trying to do things a little more strictly and um it's a little weird like obviously i want this roll to stand but um, it's out of order. And so, and they meant to press F2. And if they had rolled two sixes there, would we have left two sixes or would we have them re-roll? I don't really know. If you have a question and you're playing in a tournament game, this is the sort of situation that a judge would make a ruling on. It's like, it's not obvious to me exactly what's best. Um, so uh, if you can agree with your opponent, that's perfectly good. But if you're not really sure, just ask ask a judge. Like, judge will use their judgment, and then you'll be able to move on with the game, and that's how it goes. Um, so we decide in the end that because if they had rolled sixes, we would have had them re-roll it, um, we, we feel good about them re-rolling it. They didn't intend to roll. We always have the attacker roll first. So, um, you know, we're just like, okay, that doesn't count, uh, and I roll. So I miss but i get um i get one hit i miss on my combat roll get one hit on my leader reroll and um again they, they roll too many dice this time so when you roll too many dice uh, the etiquette is that you ignore the rightmost numbers and therefore they get a total of one hit so i lose one they lose one and then i press and they decide to retreat here and you know i think that makes some sense it's a little cautious because um you know, you did have four extra hit points before going into a stronghold. Um, but, you know, I could have had sudden strike or something like that easily. I don't think I've even played any sudden strikes. I could have charge, right? There are a lot of things that could bring this army too low. Um, I probably would have risked it, though. You know, four hits is a lot. Um, and, and then you still would have a chance to muster, so... Um, anyway, it's, it's a tough call, but they retreat. I leave one unit behind. Obviously I want to have as many hit points as possible in my main army, but I leave one unit behind because it'll slow them down on some attacks. And importantly, if I took everybody, then, um, yeah, they could potentially attack right away out of it. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So I don't know, maybe it was wrong. Maybe I should have kept that one extra hit point in my main army. But I think I'm willing, I feel like my chances of taking more and on are high. My chances of having a full stronghold are high. I might as well leave an extra unit keeping these guys in siege. Okay, um, so they play Pits of Mordor here. Obviously, that's a little inaccuracy. It would be better to just muster their last elite um, into more and on. And then when I besiege it, then they play Pits of Mordor. Um, so, you know, that makes a difference of two hit points in the stronghold. Would I still be able to take out Morinon? You know, very likely, um, for sure. But, you know, obviously you want to do what you can to help. All right, so they move into Gorgoroth. Again, they're coming back, and they're going to throw this army at me. Obviously, that makes sense. I don't know exactly what else they could do. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, maybe you, yeah, I think, I think it makes sense to do this right now. Um, so, okay. Um, so we confirm, yeah, that was just a mistake. Oh, well, um, but I do have, um, Andrew. So I play Andrew here and you know, this is, if you remember back when I drew this, I was like, Ooh, I could, I had Strider as the guide. I could have potentially healed to corruption, but I felt like my chances of military victory were better than my chances of destroying the ring. And so I sort of committed in my own mind, pretty much, I hedged a little bit, um, but pretty much committed to military victory. And therefore I didn't, I didn't play this as the card effect. And obviously it's wonderful to play it for the card effect when you have Strider as guide. Um, but I didn't. And now Andrew gets to do the military thing and I get two automatic hits against those orcs. Um, those orcs fight very well and get two hits. And therefore I end up with seven hit points in the stronghold. I feel like it's going to be able to hold. And now I'm at now I'm at four, um, four victory points. So it's tricky for my opponent to figure out what to do. Um, they they think the best chance, I guess, is to retake um, Gore Growth. Um, uh, retake using the, this army Gore Growth. It's a little tricky because there are no elites here. I wonder, could you, is there enough time to make an attack out of minus Morgul? Yeah, so this is a situation where if you had a ring, uh, you could attack out of minus Morgul, that's one, move to Gorgroth with this army that has two elites in it, which is nice, to Gorgroth, that's two, um, attack Morinon, that's three, and then uh, at, at, they go into siege, and then fourth attack could be um, actually doing the battle. But they only have... Um, four attack dice, one of which they're using to move leadership here, which I think makes total sense. You, you definitely need leadership to be able to take this out. Um, and I mean, you have a, you have a character die, so you can't even use that character die to make the attack. Um, so this one unit here in minus Morgul actually is successfully given that they used a ring last round. This regular is actually keeping all of these units out of, out of the battle. And that's significant. Two extra elites in the battle is two extra rounds of combat. Um, so that's that's definitely a big deal. Way to go, Gondorian regular. Um, okay, so they move Nazgul. That makes sense. And then I draw a character card. Um, you know, I would love to get We Prove the Swifter so that Gandalf can come to um, Morinon. I want Gandalf to be in this battle because it will stop... Um, it will stop their uh, Nazgul leadership, which is huge. Um, but I can only do that if I spend a ring or if I draw some character card that's going to get me bonus movement. Um, I don't want to give them an extra attack out of this, especially because these are only regulars. So um, they might have enough hit points, but they just won't have extra rounds. So that's my thinking. Um, of drawing the character card. I knew there were three Ent cards left, but there were also, um, if I drew the strategy cards, there were two scouts left, which aren't useful. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's right. Um, okay, anyway, they muster into Baradur. I didn't draw a useful character card, so I move uh, Gandalf to um, Dol Guldur, which puts him within range of um, Morinon, which is which is obviously nice. Um, if Shadow doesn't attack Morinon right now, I will have a chance to get Gandalf in. So, um, but they do properly, I think, attack Morinon. I think that's uh, obviously the correct play there. And then they try and attack Morinon. And, you know, this is just a hard battle. Um, I play I play no quarter here. I don't know, maybe maybe Valor is better. Um I want to save heroic death for when they play a strategy card because I'm I think that in general strategy cards have the chance to inflict more damage than character cards and that's why I played no quarter here. Um they end up rolling 3 sixes, which is obviously good for them, but I get 4 back because of 
um, no quarter. And they have to stop because they don't have an elite. They had me down to four hit points. Um, you know, it's certainly possible to to win this, um, but unlikely, particularly because I have heroic death. So um, they um, they play onslaught, which I think is definitely the right play. Um, it gets around heroic death, and if they manage to roll some sixes and get me lower, and then still have you know orcs remaining, they can they can retake it. Um, it's obviously relatively unlikely, but they could. So I think that's where I play. They get two hits, but my heroic death is going to soak that up. And then I managed to get four back. And with four back, they only have two orcs left, not enough to onslaught. And that is the game. So um, free people, military victory. I think this is a good example of things going quite badly for the fellowship, but the free people player still has a chance to stay in the game um, by building up some military. I think the sneak attack into Dol Golder was a major part of it. It was a very um, efficient way of being able to get the dice, I mean, get the two victory points um, with relatively few dice. And then, um, you know, it was hard. Once this army in Pilar gear got built up with Cairdan ships, it was hard to figure out how to defend Umbar and all three strongholds in, in um Mordor. I mean, me, again, you know, maybe you could have mustered a little different. And um, it turns out it's with a giant army. Uh, so I appreciated I appreciated the uh, what if scenarios that the game presented. Um, obviously, it's a nice start for the tournament, and I will show you the statistics. Let's look at statistics here. Um, remember that these are typically uh, flipped for. Um, Free people and shadow. I don't really know. I I think that this maybe this is right. I think they probably rolled more dice than me this game, and it felt like they were relatively high on sixes. I don't know. Um, minus four on eyes is obviously good, particularly with their effectiveness and at corrupting the fellowship, even with very low on very low eyes. Um, but you can see plus ten on musters, so that is just ludicrous. Um, you know, they, they really, they did struggle with that. The, the force pool, um, for Sauron was depleted and they couldn't muster everywhere they wanted. Um, and being 